Welcome to this YSL Excel VBA tutorial. In this second part of our series on writing SQL for Excel files, we're going to look at how to sort rows in a query. We'll start with a quick introduction to the order by clause, and then explain how to sort by a single column using the column name. We'll then move on and sort by multiple columns and do that using both ascending and descending sort orders. We'll explain how you can sort your query results when the data source doesn't contain column headers. And for the final part of the video, explain how to use the column index of a column in a select list to sort your query results. So let's get started. The setup for this video is basically the same as for the previous part in the series. We've got a workbook containing some VBA code, which is going to allow us to run some queries. And clicking the Run Query button is going to extract data from a separate file called Movies. The Movies workbook contains several different worksheets and tables containing information about films, and those are both stored in the same folder, and I'll drop a link in the video description so that you can download both of these files and follow along with writing the code if you'd like to. A lot of the code that I've written in the Sorting Rows in a Query workbook relies on Microsoft ActiveX data objects, and as in the previous video, that's not quite the point of this little series. We're going to focus on the SQL side of things. If you're interested in knowing how ActiveX data objects works and how you create connections to and retrieve data from Excel workbooks, we have a whole separate list of videos which explains that. I'd recommend getting started with how do I get data from a closed Excel file using VBA if that's what you're interested in. Just to explain briefly the code that we're going to look at and use, um, when we click the Run Query button on the menu sheet in the Sorting Rows in a Query workbook, it runs this basic subroutine which sets the query text that we're going to use to extract our data. So I've got a very basic select statement written there which is going to select all of the columns from the Film worksheet in the Movies workbook. So that string gets passed into the Get Query Results subroutine which establishes the connection to the Movies workbook. It opens up a record set, and this is the point at which our query gets used to set the source property for the record set. And there's a bunch of extra code that does various things, such as loops through the column headers and writes those out into the worksheet, writes out all the data into the worksheet, does some formatting, and I've even added some error handling code in here. I can't guarantee the code won't fall over at all, but when it does fall over, it should do so slightly more gracefully than it ordinarily would. So the, basically the only line of code, or pretty much the only line of code we're going to change is the SQL query itself. Um, just to check that that actually does work to begin with though, let's head back into the menu sheet in the sorting query, rows in a query workbook, hit the run query button, and make sure that we do indeed return all of the data from the film sheet in the movies workbook. For our first example of sorting rows in a query, I'd like to return the same set of results, but sorted alphabetically by film title. And to do that, we need to modify our SELECT statement. In the previous part of the series, we focused on the SELECT list and the FROM clause. To sort the list of results in our queries, we need to bring in an extra clause, the ORDER BY clause, which for some reason always makes me think of John Burko, but I'll do my best not to pronounce ORDER BY in the same way that he would, otherwise that's going to get very annoying. So, to add the order by clause to our select statement, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And at the end of the from clause, we can add a space followed by the two words order by. And then we can reference any column name in the table that we're selecting our data from. So I know that the column name I want to sort by is called a title. So in some square brackets, I'll write in the column name title. Head back to the menu sheet in Sorting Rows in a Query. Click the Run Query button again. I'll get the same number of results, but this time the list is sorted alphabetically by the title column. We can sort by multiple columns by adding a comma separated list of column names to the order by clause. For the next example, I'd like to sort first of all by genre so that all the action films are listed together, and then within the action genre, sort all the films by their title in ascending order. So to do that, we can head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And the list of columns you put in the order by clause determines the order in which the columns are sorted. So after order by, I'm going to type in, in some square brackets, the name of the genre column, and then write a comma to separate the genre column from the title column. Having done that, I can head back to the uh, menu page or the menu sheet, click Run Query again, and this time we can see that all the action films are listed first alphabetically, that's the first genre, and then all the films inside the action genre are sorted alphabetically by title. 
I've got some instances where the same film name appears multiple times, so some films have been remade. If I wanted to sort those films with the same title in ascending order of release date, I could add a third column to my select list, sorry, to my order by clause as well. So heading back to the Visual Basic Editor, I can add after the title column, I can type in another comma, in some square brackets, type in release date. So once again, back to the menu sheet, click the Run Query button, and this time we've got the column sorted alphabetically by genre, then alphabetically by title, and then finally in ascending order of release date. Next, I'd like to change the sort order of the entire query to base this on the Oscar wins column, and I'd like to see films with the most Oscars at the top of the list. So to do that, I can head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and I can exchange the existing list of order by columns for the single Oscar wins column. So I'll write that in some square brackets. And then if I head back to the menu sheet and click the button to run my query, I do get my, my films sorted, but they're sorted in ascending order of Oscar wins. So the least successful ones appear at the top of the list and the most successful ones appear at the bottom. To get this in the correct order, I can change the sort order from ascending to descending. So back into the design view, or the, the visual basic editor, I should say. And at the end of the column, after I've said Oscar wins, outside of the square brackets, I can say DESC for descending. So if I now head back to the menu sheet, run the query again, this time the most successful films appear at the top of the list based on the value of their Oscar wins. We can mix and match descending and ascending sort orders in the same query. So where we have films with the same number of Oscar wins, perhaps I'd like to see those sorted in ascending order of release date. They're not quite in ascending order just yet. So we've got 1959, 2003 and 1998, all winning 11 Oscars. So I'd like to sort the films by release date order after sorting them in descending order of Oscar wins. So back into the Visual Basic Editor, after I've sorted Oscar wins in descending order, I can type in a comma, then I can go for the release date field. So I can say release date in some square brackets. That will automatically sort in ascending order. And just to prove that, I'm gonna go back to the menu sheet and run that query. So when you refer to a field by default, it will always be in ascending order. If you wanted to indicate that you were doing that intentionally, you can optionally add ASC after the column name to indicate ascending order, of course. So that will make no difference to the end results of the query, but it just makes your query a little bit more readable, shows your intent rather than just accepting that it was doing the default action. Sorting by columns when you know their column names is relatively straightforward, but what if we have a table which doesn't have any column headers in it at all, such as in the movie's workbook, the Film No Headers Worksheet. If I head back to my Visual Basic Editor and I change the from clause to say from film no headers, and then I'll also change my connection string in the get query results property, uh, subroutine, I'll change the extender property where it says HDR equals yes to HDR equals no. So indicating there are no column headers in that table. What I can then do, well, I could attempt to run this query. Of course, it's not going to work because these column names don't exist. But if I switch back into the menu sheet and click the Run Query button, I get an error message popping up. At this point, I'm just going to take the opportunity to tidy up my worksheet or my workbook by clicking the Delete All But Menu Sheet button. To refer to columns in a table which doesn't have column names, you can refer to the columns based on their field position. So if I wanted to reference the Oscar wins column, that's the 14th column in this worksheet. If I wanted to reference the release date column, that's the third column in this worksheet. So to change that in the Visual Basic Editor, I can change Oscar wins to F14, field 14, and release date to F3. Once I've done that, if I head back to my sorting rows menu sheet, click the Run Query button, I'll get the same list of results as I saw earlier. I've got my generic column headings, F1 through to F14, but they're sorted in descending order of column F14, followed by ascending order of column F3. When you're selecting data from a sheet which has no column headers, you may still like to provide column headers in the final output, and we can do that by assigning aliases to the columns we're selecting. This is something we covered in the previous part of the series. But just to very quickly recap on aliases, I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and I'm going to reduce the number of columns I'm selecting. I'm not going to select every single column from that worksheet. 
I'm just going to select F2, which is the field containing the title column or the title value, followed by a comma, then F3, which is the release date, and finally F14, which is the Oscar wins field. So having done that, if I just head back to my menu sheet and run that query again, I'll find that I uh, reduce the number of columns I'm selecting. And now that I've reduced the number of columns, I can easily assign a name to each one. So I'll call F2 the film name column. This will be the date and this will be the Oscars. So back into the Visual Basic Editor, after it says F2 before the comma, which moves us on to the next column's definition, we can say as, and then in some square brackets, put in the new column name that we'd like to assign to it in the final output. The same thing for F3, I'm going to say as, and then in some square brackets, call this one date. Or at least I'll try to do that. There we go. And finally, F14 as Oscars. I'm also just going to take the opportunity now because my query is getting a bit longer and it's difficult to read it all on one single continuous line. I'm just going to break this into multiple parts. So I'm going to put the select list on one line using a space underscore to continue this line on the next line of code. And then just before the from clause, I'm going to close some double quotes and then concatenate a new line character. So a space underscore continuation character and then put the from clause on the next line. And then the same basic idea at the end of the from clause before order by, close those double quotes and concatenate a continuation character with the order by clause on its own separate line. Okay, so having done that, if I head back to the menu sheet and I run the query again, I'll see that I've now got some nice named columns using those aliases that we've assigned to the fields. If you're familiar with writing queries in a language such as Transact SQL for Microsoft SQL Server, you may be familiar with using column aliases in the order by clause. So just to demonstrate what I mean by that, instead of saying F14, I could use my column alias to order by Oscars descending. And instead of F3, I could say order by uh, date ascending. Sadly, the provider we're using to connect to an Excel workbook, the Microsoft Ace OLEDB provider, doesn't support column aliases in the order by clause. So unfortunately, if we head back to the, uh, the menu sheet and we try to run this query now, that isn't going to work. So we can't use column aliases in the order by clause when we're connecting to an Excel workbook. We have to use the original field names, whatever they happen to be. One final way to reference a column in the order by clause is based on its indexed position in the select list. So we've got currently three columns in our select list. Film name or F2 is column one, F3 or date is column two, and F14 or Oscars is column number three. So rather than relying on the name of the columns, I could say order by three descending and two ascending. If I head back to the menu sheet in the Sorting Rows workbook, click the Run Query button again, that will sort in the same order, just using the column index position. Of course, this is entirely dependent on what order you're, you're including your columns in. If I decided to move my columns to a different order, let's place date as the third column. So I'm just going to cut that from there and paste that after the Oscars. Now I'm going to sort in descending order of date and in ascending order of Oscar wins. So when I run this query again from the menu sheet, I get a completely different sort order based on that new sorting. You do need to be slightly careful when using this technique to make sure that the index numbers you've referenced actually exist in the select list. For example, if I were to take away the third and final column from this select list, if I run the query again, I've referred to a non-existent column. So as you might be able to predict, if I click run query, that falls over with a runtime error. So it says it does not recognize number three as a valid field name or expression. For the final part of the video, I'm just going to return to selecting from the original film sheet. So I'm just going to change my from clause to say film dollar sign rather than film uh, no headers. And then I'm just going to change my um, connection string back to saying HDR equals yes, because we have our header row back. I just wanted to demonstrate that you can sort by columns which you don't display in the final output. So I'm going to change my select list back to selecting just the title field from the film table. So I'll change this to selecting title. 
that means that I can't order by column index number three and two, because of course I only have one single column in my select list, but I can still reference these columns using their names. So I could use the square brackets there and I could say Oscar wins descending. And then in another set of square brackets there, instead of the number two, I can say release date. Okay, so having done that, I can head back to the menu sheet and I can run my query again. And this time I return my films in descending order of Oscar wins followed by ascending order of release date, just without those columns displayed in the final output. So there you go, those are the basic techniques you can use to sort the results of your query. You can use column names if you have them, you can use field numbers if you don't, and you can also use the column index position of columns in your select list. And all of those things can be sorted in either ascending or descending order. In the next part of the series, we're going to look at how we can select the top number of rows from the result set, and we're going to be using the order by clause to influence which rows appear at the top of the list. So we hope you're looking forward to that one. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.